Hey everyone, this is Tammy from Housewares. Today I want to show you a video on how to do some hand carved stamping. There are lots of videos out there, but I have a couple of tips that I haven't seen in other videos. So um, I wanted to show you a few stamps that I've done. There's my favorite arrow stamp. There's a leaf stamp. And I'll show you a sample of what it looks like when it's stamped. Now this stays on pad, wasn't very juicy, so it's a little bit light, but you get the idea. And there's another arrow stamp, kind of like arrows. And this is one of my favorite border stamps. This one took me about two hours, maybe more, to carve. That was quite intricate. And I use a linoleum cutter. This box is from about 50 years ago. It was my mother-in-law's. And I have two sets of uh, tips in here because um, sometimes I don't like switching out my blades. But you can see a bunch of different tips, different styles. They have um, a real thin one, and that one's a, a wider one. And there's a deep V gouge. I use that one a lot. I tend to use about two different tips. You screw it into the end, and then the other end you can um, put the tips inside, which is great for traveling. Uh, of course, not in an airport. I think they would uh, frisk you for that. Here's another feather stamp, and you can see that that one is done on an eraser. And I use both sides of the stamping material. Why not? Why not get most of the use? That eraser is from the dollar store. You can also use speedball cutting material, but I really like using this material from Dick Blick. Uh, this sheet of rubber or whatever came in like an 18 by 12 size. There I'm using a Bible art journaling stamp from my shop. And of course, I go back to this dry stays on pad. I think I'm going to have to refresh that. But you can see that um, I need to do thing, make a mistake a couple times before I realize what I'm doing. So I went back to my archival ink pad, which is newer and juicier. And all I did was I took my makeup sponge and I dabbed through that. And you can see the image. So you can take any stencil and make an image. And then I took my little blade that is used for Sculpey dough and Fimo dough. I like using this because I can get a real straight edge. You don't have to use that. You can use scissors. But this way I can just press down. And make sure you know which side is the blade and which side isn't. And I won't tell you why I give you that uh, little tip. But I'm going to zoom in here. So I'm starting out with my deep V gouge. That's the one I like to start with. And I'm going to draw a border around this because I want this to have um, just like a defined border. I wouldn't have to, but that's just what I want to do today. Then I'm putting an X in the spots that I do not want to carve. You kind of have to think backwards and realize that what you don't carve is what is going to be inked. So I start out carving at any point. It doesn't really matter, but you can see that I'm keeping the edge of the blade along the edge of the line. And I try not to get my fingers in the way. Sometimes I do, but um, I know my blades are sharp and that they're going to go around like butter. As you also see, as well, first of all, I'm putting this on a piece of cardboard so that I can just slide that around. And it really helps to lower the friction and allows me to have a more um, evenly pressed uh, technique. And you can see that I'm turning the material not the blade. And that really is the proper way to cut, even with scissors and paper. Uh, when you cut with scissors and paper, you really should be turning your paper, not your scissors. Then you get a much more even cut. Not sure if you knew that. And then I just proceed to keep carving out the excess that I don't want. And this is the, the material that I do not want to be inked. 
Now I could have done this totally opposite. I could have cut out all those X'd areas and left the other areas exposed. And uh, sometimes I do that. I'll do two different stamps. I'll do the reverse image of the other one just for fun. And so I'm just using my deep V gouge again because that you can do pretty good detail work. So I'm doing the detail work around the pieces again that I don't want to cut out. And this is where you really need to use your sharp blades. Um, the, the duller the blade, the more likely you are to cut yourself, actually. It's kind of like if you're cutting um, some meat in your kitchen with a dull knife, you're more likely to cut yourself than if you have um, a sharp blade. So I'm going to switch out my blade to a little bit wider blade. This is kind of like a U shape. And this is going to take out larger swaths of material. And you have to excuse my hair there. But this is going to be able to help me um, work a little bit faster now that I've done all the detail work. And so I'm just taking out all that excess. And it really is a very fun process. I love stamp carving. For me, it's very uh, therapeutic. And I love the fact that I don't know exactly what I'm going to get until I actually stamp it at the very end. So for those of you who are uh, rather um, OCD about things, this is probably not the craft for you. And then I'm switching out to my V gouge again because I want to do a little bit more detail work and get a few of those thinner pieces out. Now you don't want to take out everything. You do want to leave some chatter and chatter is the lines that are left that are characteristic of a hand carved stamp. So you want this to look hand carved. So now I'm going to um, look for paper, which you would think I'd have an abundance of in my craft room, but it's never organized. And as you can see, I'm pressing down on the whole stamp to get it inked. And then I'm pressing down to get that image on the whole stamp. And you can see the little chatter lines there, which I just love. And then I'll show you a sample of another stamp that I have and show you all those chatter lines. That that one I really like. It, it just looks like it's carved from wood, actually. And so there's my contact information. Thanks so much for watching.